So I'm here today with Claire Moore. Uh, Claire is the director of Certain Curtain Theatre. Um, Claire, welcome. Hello. Nice well, to meet you. Lovely to meet you, Mick. <laughs> and you too. So tell us all about Certain Curtain. Oh, well, we are a professional touring theatre company. We specialise in new writing. So everything we do is original work. Um, we set up in 1989. We've been going for 34 years. I was obviously only about five when we set up. Um, Absolutely. <laughs> we write and um, produce and perform plays and tour them to established theatres, uh, as well as community centres, universities, um, hotels that are having conferences. Um, and much of our work explores what might be termed as difficult subjects. Uh, so we've done stuff around the Holocaust. We've done a musical about football, Tom Finney. Um, we've done work around reminiscence theatre. Um, but since 1995, we've been at the forefront of using theatre to explore the difficult subject of domestic abuse. Um, and that has become a, a passion <laughs> or an obsession, if you like, um, over the years. And you're obviously, um, uh, you know, selling these, getting people to come and attend, so the general public. Yeah. Who, el who else are you uh, engaging with and uh, offering your service to? Well, we yes, we do do public performances, but we also do a lot of business to business uh, work. Um, and that can be from very small um, businesses to large housing corporations and everything in between. Um, we one of the things I think businesses and organizations aren't always aware of is how domestic abuse impacts their business. And, and we help them. Uh, raise awareness and understanding of the issues, uh, how it impacts their business and also how it impacts their clients or their customers and how they can improve their response. Um, many businesses don't think it's an issue for them, but um, it's useful to know that 75% of people experiencing domestic abuse um, and related stalking and harassment will actually be targeted at their place of work. Um, and that's because abusers know where, where they'll be. Uh, and, and in addition to that, domestic violence costs the UK economy um, something like £14 billion a year. So it's a big issue uh, for businesses of all sizes and recognising it and developing workplace policies can make all the difference to keeping staff members safe and uh, ensuring clients and customers know that they're safe as, as well. So it is um, part of what many organisations and companies think of as, as corporate responsibility. It fits into that, but it's something I think is massively overlooked. And, and, and for some people, they, they don't even consider it. Um, but, but when you realise what it costs you in terms of human costs and financial costs, um, it, it's something definitely to, to to get on board with. So, what type of events or circumstances would the would organisations um, be able to marry you up and, um, and and enable you to be able to communicate that in a in a theatre style production? Well, uh, the, there are, there are a couple of choices now. Um, since COVID, we you know we weren't able to do any live performances, so we considered doing something that we've never done before, which was film our work. And we've now filmed two productions and they have been developed into accredited CPD training packages that can be delivered via Zoom or Teams to staff members. So there are, there's that choice in terms of um, you know, working at it directly with an, a business or an organization via Zoom or Teams. Um, and also if an organization is holding a conference, for example, we can come and be, you know, a, a, something that wakes people up after the sleepy lunchtime part of a conference. Um, and it's a unique way of lifting a day of that, that can be full of PowerPoint and speakers, just bringing a different kind of dynamic drama into something where people are, are learning things that, without really knowing. Um, so, yeah, that they're the two different ways that that, that people can, can get involved. Yeah. Brilliant, brilliant. So... Um... There's other companies that are doing similar things, uh, but it is, a, it is a niche as well. But what do you think differentiates you from other options that might be out there? 
Well, we've uh, been at the forefront of, of, of using theatre for these issues since 1995. So we've got an enormous amount of experience for one. We also utilise what's called lived experience. So survivors of, of, of um, domestic abuse have informed our work. Uh, John, who's our principal scriptwriter, is a childhood survivor of domestic abuse. But also we have a unique way of um, scripting our work that brings a, a, a beauty and a light and a, and a lyrical aspect to it that lifts it from what people might think that something like this would be preachy or depressing to see. The way we do it, it, it isn't. It's, it's dynamic, it's engaging um, and entertaining. Um, and our audiences are, are blown away by, by the experience. And, and that's something that's echoed in our audience comments books, which we, we leave out for every performance, for, for people just to write whatever they like in it. And, and it's a great sense of joy to us to read those after each performance, uh, you know, when we're driving back in our van, um, and, and when we do the online sessions, there's an online version of, of where people can do that. Um, and, and that's what keeps us going, really. We also have, um, we take it very seriously when we're dealing with difficult subjects that we have a moral responsibility to, to look after people. So we link in with local agencies, um, but we also have after show discussions. So we can tailor that to a company um, or, or to an audience so that they can ask any question and it's a unique opportunity really if you go to the you know the RSC or anywhere else how often are you offered an after show discussion with the writers and actors and, and people love that opportunity um, and, and that I think is our another one of our unique selling points I think we call them don't we in the business world yes absolutely and <laughs> going one step further to connecting with your audience yeah yeah Brilliant. Okay, so um, what does the future look like? Uh, so, well, <laughs> the future is, is changing for us. As I mentioned about, you know, we, we now filmed some of our work, something we never thought we'd do until COVID. Um, but that has opened up new opportunities. You know, we've toured to Germany and Holland and as far as the Falkland Islands with our work. But now with, we can digitalise it so that we can reach other countries, rural areas, for example, people that might be isolated, um, it widens the accessibility uh, of our work. Uh, and so I'm really glad that that opportunity is, is, has arisen for us because it's something we constantly rejected. People used to ask us all the time in the old days, it was, can I have a DVD of, 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 of it? You know, And we would say, no, no, because if people have a copy of your, your work, they're never going to come and see a live performance or book you, you know, and that's, that's how we survive um, mm. on, on fees. And, and um, yeah, so I, I think the, the future is looking great in that sense that we can offer live performances, but we've also got this digital thing um, and we can now work to develop uh, our work so that we can have sign language and subtitles and make it you know even more accessible to to different audiences and what challenges have you got ahead i think our main challenge is, is has always been funding um many arts organizations um have the benefit of revenue funding from their council or the local arts board and we've never had that in 34 years um, thankfully, our audiences recommend us and we, we survived because of that and because we're good at what we do. We're passionate about what we do and we put everything into it. Um, but funding is always a problem and, it, and it, 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 we could do more if we had revenue funding because we have to spend money fundraising. Um, and at the moment, we are crowdfunding to film our most successful play, which is Lady in Red. Um, that explores one woman's attempts to leave an abusive relationship and the barriers that she faces. And, and it helps people answer that age old question, um, why doesn't she just leave? And, and we're 60%, just over 60% there of what we need. So we just need just under 40% um, to be able to film it, to get um, British Sign Language interpretation subtitles and also do some live performances to launch the digital version of it. So, so we're quite excited about that, but that is a bit of a challenge. Um, and that's on Space Hive, um, which is a kind of you know online 
crowdfund. I know there's lots of them. So people could find that on Space Hive. Yeah, uh, spacehive.com like to... is forward slash yeah. lady in red. <laughs> Brilliant. Good plug. Well yeah. done. <laughs> so um what have you learned along the way? Um, doing all this sort of stuff. Claire. But I am resilient. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, to, to we've overcome many, many barriers over the years. And 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 as I say, we're still here after 34 years. So we're doing something right. Um, I know I'm on the right path. Um, I know that our work can make a real difference. I know that because we're so connected with our audiences and the feedback that we get. Um, drama has got a unique ability to reach people's hearts and minds, our intellect and our emotions. And I think it's that combination that leads to change. And, and it's great to be part of other people's change um, and, and for society's sake. But yeah, I'm, I'm a strong, resilient kind of person. <laughs> Yeah, and it sounds like you've got a great privilege in, in terms of what you do as well. Yeah, yeah, I love what I do. And uh, if you were doing it all again, Ooh. hypothetically speaking, yeah, knowing what you now know, what might you do differently? I think one of the first things I do is make friends with people who are the decision makers, the funders, the councils and charities. And, you know, we've achieved so much over the years. We've reached so many people Um who thought they were alone or to blame for the abuse that they were subjected to. Um, and we've been able to help them and, and help others change their attitude to um, victims and survivors across the UK, um, but and, and internationally. And that's no small feat, but imagine what we could have done if we'd have had a proper level of funding. Um, you know, So that's what I would do. I would um and and I think when people see what we do they completely get it people understand funding an after schools club or sponsoring the local scouts football team or whatever they don't understand the benefit of sponsoring or funding theater that the, the, the kind of theater that we do until they experience it um and we, I mean one of the reasons we have our comments books is not only to get feedback but also to to show people how impactful what we do is um so yeah that's what i do i'd make friends with everybody who has a bag of money so now you know that onwards and upwards eh yes absolutely yeah great stuff uh brilliant thanks very much claire it's been uh, brilliant talking to you and yeah, i wish you all you. the best i'll send you the link to the crowdfund if you can share it with your friends <laughs> will do definitely <laughs> thank you claire